In this second video, we begin by exploring the math associated with the conjugate's application to power calculations. We are only going to be dealing with the variables here, as defined up here on the screen, which they, these variables apply to both leading and lagging scenarios. Now, pay attention to the angle terms. Remember, what we want in the end is the difference between the angles of the original phasers, the original phasers, not the conjugate phasers. This is obviously a subtraction of angles. Once again, we're looking for the difference between angles. It's not an addition. So let's start here without using the conjugate to see what happens. Keep in mind, these are written in polar notation here. So what we're doing here is we're multiplying the voltage and the current phasers together. And that's shown here in proper polar algebra as the multiplication of the magnitude variables and the addition of the angles together. Now we expand the polar notation into the full trigonometric notation, which uses uh, the sine and the cosine. You should be aware here that once we start using sines and cosines, we aren't really referencing the arrows. We're referencing the actual sinusoidal attributes of voltage and current. And if the relationship between phasers and sinusoidal waveforms is not clear to you, uh, don't worry too much. We uh, hope to have some videos to cover that topic sometime in the future. But don't ask me when just now. You see that we are multiplying the magnitudes, which is exactly what we want. But when you look at the angle terms within the sine and cosine, you'll see that they are being added together. What do these represent? Well, look up here. You'll see that it's actually the conjugate angle, phi asterisk. This conjugate angle, if you look on the graphs, doesn't demonstrate the difference between the original voltage and current phasers. So that means this just can't be right because we need to subtract the angles to get the difference. So you should start here to see why we might need to use the conjugate, or at least you should get the feeling that this non-conjugate formula is insufficient for our calculations. Now let's apply the conjugate version of this formula to see if we get a better outcome. The setup is the same, but notice the angles. We're getting the difference between the angles, and we're not summing them as we saw in the previous formula. So remember, we're using the current's conjugate phasor. The magnitude stays the same. The angle is what's, what changes. It's the opposite. That's what the conjugate does. So there's nothing particularly profound, actually, to get out of this. We're just using a math tool. But this is why we use the conjugate. It gives us the difference between the two angles, what we were searching for from the very beginning. If you notice here, we're using theta v minus theta i. We're subtracting voltage from current. While above, we did happen to show that it was theta i minus theta v. But that's not really significant. What the conjugate is doing is, is it's, it's allowing us to get the difference between the two. So whether the voltage comes first or the current comes first in the subtraction, that doesn't matter. We're looking for the difference. And that's really the brilliance of using the conjugate, is it applies to both leading and lagging scenarios. So the mystery of the conjugate now is solved. Pretty cool, huh?